inside the jeev is god and the jeev is under maya so jeev maya and god are in the same place the world is made of maya and god is all pervading in it that means maya and god are in the same place all these three tatvas are together what then is separating the jeev from bhagavan so far in the bhakti shatak shri maharaj ji has explained that there is one tatva divine entity which has taken on the forms of krishna and radha and he has got many shaktis apart from radha so kripal ji maharaj divided the ananta shaktis of bhagavan into maya shakti jeev shakti and para yoga maya shakti he explained that the jeev shakti is a tatastha shakti it's a borderline shakti like you have the tat of the river the river bank is called the tat nadi tat it is a part of the earth but it's under the water similarly the soul is a part of god and yet it is overcome by maya so kripalu ji maharaj here is explaining why is maya got the soul under its grip the fact is that the soul and god are together god is everywhere ya atmanam antaro yamayati yah prithivi mantaro yamayati yo jalam antaro yamayati the veda say god is sitting inside the atma he is sitting everywhere in the earth he is everywhere in the water yah prithvi tishthati ya apsu tishthati yo vayor tishthati ya aakashe tishthati again the ved mantra say there is no place where god does not exist so how then has the soul become separate from god what is the separation it is said we are separate from god that is why we are under maya where is the separation he is sitting inside you he is nitya nirantar prapt what does nitya nirantar prapt mean means he is eternally inside us nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam our soul is nitya or eternal not by its own power because the supremely eternal god is sitting inside our soul and granting us immortality that is why we are eternal and our soul is sentient it has got life in it because the maha chetan bhagwan is sitting inside the soul so god will not leave us for a moment if he does go to sleep for a little while our personality will cease to exist in other words our sat will no longer remain so we exist because god is inside us that is why he is nitya prapt he is eternally with us plus he is everywhere in this world eko deva sarva bhuteshu guna sarva vyapi the vedas say there is no place where god does not exist 
since he is everywhere in this world that means wherever we go god is there and hence he is incessantly with us eternally plus incessantly with us then how come this material energy maya has overpowered us this is a riddle actually jeev maya and brahma all three are in the same place you see inside the jeev is god and the jeev is under maya so jeev maya and god are in the same place the world is made of maya and god is all pervading in it that means maya and god are in the same place so all these three tatvas are together what then is separating the jeev from bhagavan what is the cause of this separation the kripalu ji maharaj explains in this verse he says krishna bahir mukh jeev kah the jeev has turned its back to god now if god is everywhere how do you turn your back to god what it means is the consciousness has been turned away from god our consciousness is bereft of god that is the bahir mukhta tulsi das ji writes jib jib te harite bilagano tapte de geh nij manyo maya bas swarup bisrayo te hi bhramte darun dukh payo he says hari te bilagano the soul forgot god and what was the consequence of that tapte de geh nij manyo because of that mistake which one forgetting god the soul then started thinking of itself as the body maya bas swarup bisrayo te hi bhram te darun dukh payo and because of that it is now running in the world the chaitanya mahaprabhu said the same thing krishna bhuli sei jeev hoy anadi bahir mukh krishna bhuli the jeev forgot god and thus it is bahir mukh atev maya tare de sansare dukh hence the material energy maya is troubling the soul kabu swarge uthaye kabu narke dubaye dand jane raja yena nadiya chubaye you know what is the most terrible form of torture when two armies are at war and one army catches another army person they want to extract some secret out of that person in the olden days the kings would do it so they torture that person to extract some secret and how would they torture the person they would dunk that person's head into the water so when he is gasping almost my god i am going to die they would release him and he takes a few breaths again they put him in so that breaks the person they say all right all right i'll tell you don't do this to me again so chaitanya mahaprabhu says the material energy maya is doing the same thing to the soul the soul gets a little bit of happiness i am dulha raja today i am so happy i am going on a white horse and drums are playing for me but how long does it last char din ki chandri after that the harsh reality you have to work from morning to night to feed all the chunnu munnu etc <laughs> and listen to the galis the abuses of the boss so the soul is dunked in oh my god so terrible so miserable all right go for three days to las vegas enjoy yourself ha <sighs> there again you are dunked 
Now wait for the next long weekend and go to Tampa, Florida. Ah. And that is what is going on. So Kripaluji Maharaj is expressing that same Siddhant. That the soul is vimuk with its back to God. And hence the material energy Maya has overcome it. And what did Maya do? Tate bhulyo apu kaha. Banyo vishaya rasameen. Now the soul has forgotten itself. Somebody who doesn't know himself or herself would be called a mad person. Right? So we also have forgotten ourselves. Being the eternal soul, we are thinking of ourselves to be the body. I am Ramesh Srivastava, I am Gujarati, Marwadi, Sindhi, Punjabi, Bengali. We are thinking of ourselves to be the body. That is the sign of madness. The sign of a mad person is that they forget who they are. The problem arises if you become mad for a little while and then you become all right. You see, sometimes some people have the bipolar disorder. What happens when you have a bipolar disorder? For some time you are all right and then you become abnormal. Now there was this person who used to have these fits of madness. Now when he would become mad, he would totally lose sense of who he is. And when he would become all right, he would start serving everybody else and be absolutely normal. So in the same way, from time to time, we wake up and we realize, oh, who I am. And then we forget completely. And when we forget our spiritual identity, then the natural consequences that we start running after the pleasures of the body. Because we decide that I am the body. And hence, the bodily pleasures will give me satisfaction. So we are running, 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 running. And in this running around, nobody is getting satisfaction. You know, another person went to a madhouse. And he went to the first room. There was a man there who was doing Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. <laughs> he asked the warden, what is this Lulu, Lulu, Lulu he's doing? The warden said, you know, there was this beautiful damsel called Lulu. And this man loved her. Now she did not marry him. She married somebody else. So he went insane. And that is why he sits here and does lulu, lulu, lulu. Now this man went to the next room. There also the person was sitting and doing lulu. <laughs> he asked the warden, was this lulu, was she very characterless? Did she have many lovers? The warden said, this is the man who married lulu. <laughs> He also went mad. So the fact is that there is no happiness in the world. But in this confusion of being the body, we are running after the world. Now, our running after the world is like trying to listen to the lecture through the eyes. Why did you not come for my lecture? Swamiji, I was experimenting to listen to the television with my eyes. How can you listen with the eyes? The eyes grasp form and the ears grasp words. Similarly, the soul is divine and the body is material. So, the object of the body is the material world. And the object of the soul is the divine God. That is why the happiness that the soul wants 
is from the divine realm, not from the material world. So why is this confusion happening? Because of Maya. Maya is like the darkness. Like if you go to a cinema hall. Inside the cinema hall, people sit in illusion. People ask me, Swamiji, do you see movies? I say, you know, I prefer not to see movies and read novels. Because we are already in Maya, why increase the Maya further? But everybody has their own interests. So in the sitting in the movie hall, people fall into illusion. What is going on on the screen? You have the light of different colors falling. People accept it as the reality. Oh, I had a friend in uh, school. So he was a fan of Devanand. And if he saw Devanand with his shoe torn in some movie, he would also tear his shoe. In the olden days, when the movies first came, the people were so simple, they would accept them as the reality. And then that is why in a tragedy scene, half the hall used to be crying. Now, it was only the light falling, but people accepted it as the reality. And the moment the main switch came on and there were lights in the hall, everybody's illusion was dispelled. Oh, where are my slippers? I hope my keys have not fallen. Let me be the first one into the scooter stand. After that, there'll be a lot of traffic. The reason for the illusion was the darkness of the cinema hall. Similarly, the reason for all this confusion is the darkness that has enveloped the soul. And that darkness is of the nature of Maya, Aditya Varnan Tamasa Parastat. Why is Maya overcome us? Because we have turned our backs towards the light. Krishna Surya Sama. God is like the sun. So we have turned our backs towards the sun and hence the darkness of Maya has overcome us. So here Kripaluji Maharaj completes his description of the Jiva Tattva.